At the beginning of this video, the camera slipped out of position and missed the top of my head. I have decided to include this footage anyway. Please enjoy! So we have a new milestone today with the addition of Daltano 01. We have hit 42 subscribers, which is the Douglas Adam limit. YouTube will be sending Daltano a complete unabridged collection of Zephod Beeble Brox's poetry. I'm sure it'll head right to you very shortly. 42 subscribers, didn't think we'd ever make it. Look at where we are. Scalagrim, you are officially on notice. We are coming for you. So as a result of that, let's celebrate by looking at a really cool sword. This is a Jan from the very early uh, portion of China's history. Uh, it's not quite as far back as the Han Dynasty. This is from the Jin Dynasty. So this is from, let's say, 200 AD to 500 AD or so. It is old enough that it is still using a type of scabbard slide that uh, was very common in the Han Dynasty. This one has a kind of dragon or hydra as they're called on it. And these fittings were often done in nephrite or jade or some um, other type of stone. Um, in this case, it was done in brass. So this, I'm just going to pull it out. And you'll see that this Jian has a very long, thin blade. Uh, it's double-edged. It's got a, a central fuller, so it's got a hexagonal cross-section and a nice, strong, pointed tip to it. And it's got a, a medium-sized cross-guard on it, which can be used to finger if need be, or you can keep your hand uh, behind it. Um, by contrast here, and I'm actually going to pull another sword. <laughs> this is another LK Chen sword. So the sword that we're talking about is the LK Chen Scarlet Sunrise. And by contrast, this is the LK Chen White Arc. So this is a Han period Jian, but this would have been a military sword. This is a military sidearm. So something like an arming sword, uh, but used in Han China. So around the time of the Roman Empire. And you can see that it's still um, hexagonal in cross section, but it's heavier and it's got a, a nice strong um, broad blade by contrast the scarlet sunrise even though it's almost the same length in, in blade it's it's a lot thinner and it it weighs significantly less this is i think in the ballpark of like 580 grams altogether in blade weight i'll have to get the the stats on the on the the um the white arc so you find this type of blade you find this type of blade shown in art being carried by uh, gentlemen, so by the Chinese literati, by the uh, your your uh, well-to-do man who's dressed up all in his his robes, with his hair done up, with his sword at his side, and it has uh, a neat scabbard with a really large uh, shape at the end. Again, also uh, with a uh, with fancy designs on it and this sword while while strong is definitely very light and nimble and perhaps much more optimized for um for dueling purposes than for use on the battlefield compared to the white arc um can it still it does it still have enough emphasis to cut let's take a look So you can see that it still cuts perfectly well. It's It's got a very sharp, keen edge, and because of its leverage and length, it moves very fast, and it speeds through very light targets. Against heavier targets, I'm not so sure. This wasn't designed, I don't think, for use up against heavy armored targets, um, even though it's got a very sharp point, and you might be able to sneak it into the gaps of uh, it, where where armor isn't uh, found. Uh, the design of this sword does seem to be for a civilian sort of context. Um, your average everyday wear, again, swords have multiple functions, so whoever's wearing this is indicating something about their status, just 
by having it on their person, just like someone today wearing a very fancy watch or a very fancy belt is telling everyone something about them. Um, being able to carry this sword is telling something about them, but it also certainly is perfectly functional if you have to defend yourself against another swordsman or perhaps against a slightly heavier weapon, against a spear or against uh, someone with a, a sword and shield. Um, this requires a lot more finesse than uh, using something like a doll, using something like a single-handed uh, chopping sword, which might hit a little bit heavier and just require uh, a percussive strike. But um, but it's it's uh, still a, a very uh, well-crafted, well-made sword that uh, can can get the job done. Okay, so I'm back in my office, this time without my head chopped off. I haven't lost my hair just yet. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, the Scarlet Sunrise. It is a very, very nice sword, and again, very faithfully reproduced. Um, I wasn't expecting to be as um, enthralled with it as I was when I picked it up. LK Chen has really done a, a great job at making a very nicely balanced sword that handles well in the hand, I really can't find any fault. This this is a sword that was sent to me for review. It's been through other hands before it's gotten to me. Um, and even with all of the use and abuse, it's held up very well. It hasn't shown any real big signs of trauma or damage. Um, everything looks fresh. It doesn't have any looseness. Um, there's maybe a little bit of excess glue along some of the fittings, but nothing has knocked or come loose everything is still very tight um, even the uh, finish and the uh, polish on it is still very um, very strong and pronounced and um, on the whole it's it's just a, a very nice sword um, again this is a sword that's from the Jin dynasty which is a little after the Han dynasty which is why I was comparing it to the earlier blade and it's giving me the opportunity to tell you about a very fun sort of feature. So this scabbard slide here uh, that we talked about just briefly before has this kind of interesting motif. Hopefully the camera focuses on it. You can see it's got a little dragon here. Sometimes in the literature, this is referred to as a hydra instead of a dragon. And um, we see examples of these coming from the earlier period. So coming from the earlier, um, at least as, as far back as the Han, but um, even two dynasties perhaps earlier, um, you'll, you'll see this type of scabbard slide design used. And the way that it works is this is held against the body with the slide facing out rather than inward, and a belt runs through it so that you can then slide the the sword anywhere along the the length of the belt. So if you have it against your hip, you can push it against your back or bring it forward uh, against your body anywhere along the, the length of the belt that's looped through the gap here in, in the slide. It's a very convenient way to um, have the belt mounted. So LK Chen has reproduced this in brass. Originally, especially in Han, the Han period, these were done in jade, um, specifically white jade, which is called nephrite. Uh, because that is found specifically in China, in addition to the stylings of this, that allows us to trace where these came from originally, regardless of where they're found archaeologically. Some Something interesting has come up. Um, there is a paper that was put out uh, by Gonthier Eric and um, Kostov Ruslan, and it's called Han Dated Hydra Type nephrite scabbard slide, and it was found in Kachakta, uh, um, oh, it was found in Kachakta, Bulgaria. This is a great paper and only seven pages long, so I encourage anyone who's interested in the topic to seek it out and read it in full. It covers the context of the Sarmatian burial mound and the movement of their people throughout Asia and Europe, and how the swords discovered have elements which show influences from a variety of different cultures. It also covers Chinese scabbard slide typology to a degree, which is an often neglected topic. Uh, so check it out, it's pretty cool. Looking for a second at one of LK Chen's other, I have too many beautiful LK Chen swords. This is one of the other Han, Han uh, Dynasty swords. 
Um, this is another example of a scabbard slide. And again, um, although this one is done in brass, these would typically be done in jade on the higher end uh, examples. Um, so this one, it has kind of like a beaded or, or pebbled texture. So in this paper that we're going to discuss, this is referred to as a type one scabbard slide. And this one here is referred to as a type two or three, um, which is called a, a hydrotype. So you can see that they came in a couple of different uh, varieties. So this paper discusses a grave in Bulgaria, and it's dated to around the uh, second century AD. And in it, they found two swords, which were basically Chinese gen, and specifically, were, they're very similar to Chinese gen. Um, they've deteriorated heavily, they've corroded heavily. They were long, they were around maybe 90 centimeters in blade length, maybe 110 centimeters in, in total length. And it's questionable as to where they came from. Maybe they were Sarmatian, the, the, maybe they came from somewhere slightly east of there by the Ural Mountains, but they possessed hydrotype scabbard slides on them. And specifically, they were made of white jade, nephrite, which is not local to the region. So these swords had to originate in China once upon a time, especially the, the decoration. Um, it's definitely worth in looking at the whole paper because they, they go into other finds where they show, and you can see these in some museums, where these Chinese scabbard slides have been found at various locations in Russia, um, along Afghanistan. Um, the, the presence of ch Chinese scabbard slides has been traceable from China, from Han China, all the way across and now all the way into far eastern Europe. So even though there was never any official contact or uh, trade all the way from the east to the west, there were several very close um, approaches. Uh, there was the War of the Heavenly Horses where uh, Han China went to war with uh, with Bactria in order to uh, retrieve their their uh, their prized uh, horses, and um, Rome itself made several attempts to try and um, reach China in order to procure silk uh, from them, of course. Um, but in this one case, they specifically say that they don't know the ownership of the swords, whether it was a Thracian, a Sarmatian, or even a Roman who um, owned the swords at the time, whether they were trophies, whether they were gifts, who knows. But you have two identifiable Chinese swords that were in essentially a Roman tomb in Bulgaria or in the second century AD. And some of them have been found even later, even into the third and fourth century, which corresponds right into what we have here in the, the Jin dynasty. So it's very neat that L.K. Chen has reproduced a sword that corresponds with, that, that gives you an example of the furniture that was butting up against the eastern edges of Europe and coming into contact with the Roman Empire uh, so long ago. In fact, um, even more interesting, if you want to get into further reading and perhaps um, contentious theories, there's another paper. It's an article from David Bartas from 2005. And in it, they discuss the origin of scabbard slides on Roman swords. So we normally think of a gladius, and on, if you take a look at a typical gladius, oftentimes you'll see that they have little rings attached to the sides of the scabbard for them to have a different type of suspension. But as the empire went on and they started using longer swords, the spatha, for, in for instance, um, scabbard slides started to become adopted, m not unlike what we see in the, these Han Jian. So the question is, where did that type of a technique come from? Um, there are some authors who feel that the Chinese scabbard slides, which we have shown before, coming through certainly um, Central Asia and into parts of Eastern Europe, may have influenced 
some of uh, the, that Roman adoption, specifically a type called the uh, Kisfine uh, type of uh, slide seen on certain Roman swords. Apparently, uh, there's a theory that uh, it may have been the result of Chinese uh, scabbard slides. So, something for you to think about. Here is a beautiful Scarlet Sunrise, and not only is it a wonderful representation of an example from the Jin Dynasty, but it's also a sword which may or may not have had lasting influences in European sword design. Until next time, take care.